Hello everyone and welcome back to another very mind-blowing episode of every animated movie of the year. And this particular episode, dare I say, is the most highly anticipated episode yet. As you know, today we saw the Emoji Movie. So normally I bop into some details on the plot and such, but this particular movie comes with a rather hefty preface. So I'm gonna swap out the plot premise for some backstory. I mean, the whole entire plot is in the trailer anyways, besides the very end of the movie, but what else is new? So preface, the Emoji Movie has kind of been the face of, oh God, this is what things have come to. And what I mean by that is, some years back when the Lego movie was this huge surprise hit, Studio smelled some blood in the water. Like, gee, if Legos can have a movie, so can Angry Birds. And hey, why not even emojis? And who knows what'll come next? Tiddlywinks! Point is, it's a very slippery slope with things like these, especially when they are tied to products, and we all know animation's affinity for toy and product sales. Gotta push that merch! Now, yes, the very idea of an emoji movie is groan-worthy, but hey, Lego pulled it off so maybe they could too. I mean, Lego is a timeless toy brand and emojis could yet be a passing fad, but hey, why not? When the trailers hit the web, the plot of the movie was revealed to be seemingly a very, very recycled idea about characters who are sort of prescripted to be one certain way and they want to break away from it. You know, be yourself, man. You're more than what everyone says you are. Which is actually a really great message, but one that has been done into the dirt. So if you do it, it's got to be something special, something new-ish. What's more, not only is it super heavy on the be yourself thing, but it also veers heavily into like, what are Blank doing when you're not watching? The secret life of Blank. So it's not only a movie based on little texting faces, but it piles high on these two very, very exhausted animated movie tropes. Okay, imagine this. I'm sure we've all been really, really excited for a movie to come out, and we sort of track all this stuff about it up to the release, it gets so hyped up, and then when it comes out, inevitably, we're disappointed. So if a film has super crazy low expectations, like the Emoji Movie has, it's kind of a win-win. If the movie sucks, it's like, oh well, okay, it's, it's just what we thought it would be. If it's great, it's like, great, we feel pleasantly surprised. So having said all of that, what are my thoughts on the movie? Well, they are... meh. Okay, I know, that's like the easiest joke ever to make about this film, but it's really how I feel. If you've seen on Rotten Tomatoes, the score is at like 3%, which is bonkers low, and it makes it seem like everyone just hates it. But always consider this. With Rotten Tomatoes, if a vast majority of critics all agree that a movie is like a lukewarm B-, then it still gets like a 94%. Likewise, if every critic is like, meh, on a movie, it can get a drastically low score. Of course, with a 3%, it's probably a safe bet that the movie isn't great. But I just say this to caution people who swear by Rotten Tomatoes. Cause remember, it's not like the critics are saying this movie is ranking a 3 out of 100, it's just that 97% of critics agree that it's less than fresh. Of course, I never base my opinions on Rotten Tomatoes and I try to avoid reviews at all costs as to not influence myself before I write my opinions. So what exactly did I think of this movie? It's not good. <coughs> It's not good. The regurgitated themes are just kind of passed along with no real passion. I kept thinking to myself that there was never anything that happened in this movie that Wreck-It Ralph didn't do like a bajillion times better. The movie, of course, before its release was heavily compared to the premise for Wreck-It Ralph, and rightly so, but there's none of the charm from that film. Instead, you get the easiest of low-hanging jokes made with the emojis and product placement the likes of which I have never seen in any film in my entire life. Like, I get it. When you go to the phone menu in the movie, it totally ups the cred if you can use, like, the real Facebook and YouTube logos rather than make up fake apps to simulate those. 
It's like when you're watching a movie and someone has frosted toastios on the table and we're all like, that's not a real cereal. I bet they didn't want to pay for the rights to use a real brand. And we kind of feel the immersion break a bit, but we all get the game at the same time. Despite just getting the rights to use the Facebook and YouTube logos, there are some much more egregious product pushes that make you just slouch down in your theater seat and look longingly for the door. Just Dance and Candy Crush are two companies that are featured prominently as seen in the trailers, but it has to have been Dropbox who really spent the big bucks to be a part of this movie. There's a scene where the heroes are being chased by evil robots, and in this world all of the apps are like a neighborhood, so they're looking for a place to hide and they come up on the Dropbox app, and a character literally says, Let's go into the Dropbox app, it's securely protected from malware so no viruses can get in. I'm slightly paraphrasing that line, but it is really, really close to that. This movie just made me feel bad. And it's not like it's an aggressively bad movie, it's just aggressively nothing. It's like a dream where you feel like you've been there before, but in, like, a better way. <laughs> I really liked a lot of the performances though. Uh, Maya Rudolph's character was probably the best part of the movie for me. An actually pretty weird and creepy villain who taps into your childhood fear of those horrifying dental tools. I also liked a joke they made about the old school emoticons being the elderly people in the universe. That was good. Maya Rudolph's character and the emoticon joke. Those were the two things that I liked. And by the way, I hope you like that Christina Aguilera song, I Just Wanna Feel This Moment or whatever it's called, because that thing is pretty much mainlined into your veins for about 20 minutes of the movie. And I could have sworn that the volume on that song was higher than the rest of the entire movie. I didn't enjoy it. I've just, like, never seen a movie live up to the hype as much as this one. And unfortunately for the Emoji Movie, it's negative hype. I'd certainly call it a skip. Even for so bad it's good watchers, it's nowhere near that. It's just boring and tired and filled with Christina Aguilera music. So we are throwing to the list where I cannot believe I am putting this below The Smurfs, a movie I fought tooth and nail to stay awake during, a movie I would never want to watch again. But you did it, Emoji Movie. Now there is one last thing that brings this film to another level for me, which is the ending. So now that you've seen the rankings, I'm gonna get into spoilers and just quickly talk about the conclusion to the film and why it was the nail in the coffin of the Emoji Movie for me. So for those still hoping to catch this one in theaters, thank you so much for watching, but we're gonna go talk about the ending. Okay, everybody gone? Good. So I'm gonna compare this movie pretty much wholesale to Wreck-It Ralph because well, let's be honest, the movie pretty much proudly rips it off. Except they seemed to have missed the point. For starters, Jailbreak, the edgy, unique hacker girl, ends up being this fabled princess emoji who escaped the text app to go up to the cloud and be this awesome rebel. And the princess twist could only have been unforeseen by someone who is seeing their first movie ever in life. So this hacker princess girl is going to help the main character, Gene, fix his malfunction so he doesn't make all the emoji faces, he just makes the meth face that he's supposed to make. Blah blah blah, yada yada yada, ends up that Gene becomes a special emoji in the end that just makes all the faces, that way he can be himself. He's like a morphing emoji. This is half of my gigantic dissatisfaction with the ending. In Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph learns that the bad guys are important to the games too, and it's okay for him to be a friendly, good-natured guy. But still, he recognizes his role in the world and knows that just because it's his job to be the bad guy, it doesn't define who he is. But if he left his role as the bad guy, the games wouldn't work and the players that all of the video game characters love would be sad and disappointed. So for the emoji movie, I mean, what happens if I want to use the Matt emoji? I mean, that's a pretty prime time emoji. Is it just gone? I mean, I guess I would assume that his parents would maybe fill in, but that's a lot of logic pathing I would have to do. Something about one guy getting to be this awesome morphing emoji and still the rest of the emojis are trapped as just one thing felt weird to me. Like, why couldn't it have been that the emoji civilization goes, we learned that it's okay for us to feel all of the emotions, but each of us are best at this one emotion, and that's our job. Yes, this sounds very, very nitpicky, but I promise you, you will think the same thing when you see it. Okay, other thing. Secret Hacker Princess Girl. 
Her dream is to go up into the cloud where she can do whatever she wants and be herself far away from the princess stereotypes that she's subjected to. She has this big speech about how she's not this damsel in distress, but in the end, it appears that she just gives up her jailbreak hacker identity and stays in the emoji world. It's like she gave up everything she said she wanted. She even ditched her blue hair and went back to looking like a princess. I was just like, what? Like, by the time the movie ended, I was confounded. It was like they wanted to copy the themes of these other great movies before them, but not the good parts where the characters learn something. We, we don't need those. Oh boy. Anyways, you guys know I hate being negative about stuff, but what can I say? Remember earlier when I said that a 3% Rotten Tomato score doesn't mean that a movie is ranked like 3 out of 100 points? Well, yikes. Let's just leave it at that. All downhill from here, folks. Of that, we can be sure. This has been a long and ranty episode, so if you're still here, thank you so much for checking out the video and hanging around. I genuinely appreciate it. As for me, well, I will see you guys next time, right here on every animated movie of the... <laughs>